Hey Tubes, John Smith here, back with my very last LEGO Star Wars 2015 set review. So to finish off 2015, I'm doing a set which I really should have done three months ago, but there was a lot of other stuff on. I'm doing the first order transporter, set number 75103, ages 9 to 14, comes with 792 pieces and costs £80 or $90, although hopefully by this point you may be able to find it a little cheaper because of the Christmas season coming up. Maybe you picked up one of these on Black Friday, I think they're pretty cheap then, I'm not sure. But I feel this set, more than any other set in this entire way, the entire Force Awakens line, I want to get multiples of. I mean, I'll give you the snow speeder as well because those troopers, but I really, really want to get a second one of these uh, because the figures, I mean, of course, yeah, you don't want two Captain Phasmas, but every other figure you'd want multiples of. You know, you want multiple resistance and, of course, multiple, uh, <laughs> I was about to call them the Empire, sorry, First Order troopers. So, and of course, the set itself, I feel it's much more like the gunship of the new trilogy, so you want to get multiples of that. Now there are a few things about it, I've had it for three months now, so you may see a lot of dust on it, sorry about that, but there's a lot of things about it now that I have seen that could be improved, some things I just still think are extremely cool, the size of it is, is slightly different to how you may think from looking at the box, but just a few little things which I'm going to point out, so waiting three months was almost in one sense a bit of a good thing, because it means I can point out more stuff I've noticed about it in that time. That being said, this was on like my second or third favourite set of the entire year, my top ten list, so you're going to understand that I do really enjoy this set, I really think it's an extremely cool set. Uh, I know not a lot of people, I know a lot of people like it, but I think a lot of people prefer the Millennium Falcon and Kylo Ren's shuttle. I don't know why, I'm just a massive fan of the design of Kylo Ren's shuttle, and of course, I've got the old Millennium Falcon, so it's not really up there for me. But this really does, I really love the design of it, and I, I love the design of all the Force Awakens sets, but I'm more going to that later in the review, because I don't want to take too much of the time. I'm pretty sure it's going to go off too long anyway, because there's a lot to talk about in this set. But even so, that being said, let's go right now in to the minifigures. Alright, so starting off, first of all, we have, of course, Captain Phasma, who I'm not entirely sure. She might be either the, if you will, Boba Fett of the new trilogy, or the Darth Vader. Of course, we have Kylo Ren, which can be the main bad guy, we presume. But then again, if you look at the original trilogy, we didn't see Darth Sidious until like, episode 5. So who knows, maybe Kylo Ren isn't the actual biggest baddie. That being said, of course, we have Captain Phasma here. Um, she is extremely cool minifigure. In fact, I'm debating whether I like her more than Kylo Ren as a minifigure, because I think she is so awesome. Despite Despite the fact that strictly speaking, yeah, you'll say the torso and the helmet printing is exactly the same as the standard First Order Trooper we have right there. Apart from that, she has this cloth and it's just sort of a chromish kind of colour. It's not really proper chrome, like we've got a main fourth figure which was fully like um, shiny chrome of a Stormtrooper. So of course it's not quite that, but who knows, you may get a polybag version like that of uh, Captain Phasma here because I think it would work well. You can see here, even her weapon is not this standard sort of regular black we have before. It's more, we actually get three variations of the gun in this. I mean, not the actual gun itself, but the um, color of it. This one very much matches her torso and her helmet, just an entire body, really, uh, in color. I can't, don't really call you call it, I'm not sure, I don't think you call it gun metal or whatever, sort of grey, but it is very sort of silvery, kind of greyish type thing. A lot lighter, if you will, than gun metal, really. But even so, it is still a very nice that we get uh, something different for her. I kind of maybe wish we got a different weapon altogether, but I don't really mind that much, you know. I mean, to try and make it more unique, perhaps, to get a different weapon, but that's all right. You know, the fact it's just different color makes it very cool. Anyway, so she, the entire body, as I said, is pretty much exactly in printing as the first old trooper, as it is, of course, in the actual film. It's not just Lego copped out. Uh, but that being said, the colour really does stand out, and it really does make her look individual. It kind of reminds me of like the Shadow Troopers or whatever from the original trilogy, you know. But even so, it looks very, very nice. I sh of course, I will show you more about this when I show you the first order troopers themselves. But effectively, yeah, she's just the exact same printing, so very nice. She's completely and utterly silver. Like, even her um, hands aren't black, nothing's black about her. her Belt isn't black, and of course, we've got some black printing there. But everything about her is completely silver with black and other things printed onto her. So that is very, very nice. Looking at the cape, this cape is not the standard sort of um, cape we've seen before, like perhaps we saw in some clone troopers, because we've got a red line going out here, and the cape itself is significantly larger, and it's kind of got, it's deliberately cut off here. I didn't just literally cut it off, by the way. Sorry, it's dusty again. It's been a while. <laughs> but um, you can see here, it's kind of ridged to make it give a better look to it, which is very, very nice. Turning around, you can see the back torso there, pretty basic, nothing massively special to show you. Again, exactly the same as the first order Jewels, but even so, that's pretty cool. 
Taking the helmet off, we do not get any face paint. You get a black head. This is actually, well, not exactly the same as Kylo Ren, because Kylo Ren, we get the same face, but it kind of, the same sort of idea, I think, with Lego, because I'm not sure whether it was either Lego didn't know that uh, what her face was going to look like, or it's a secret. I've heard different theories of why there's no face printing here, uh, but yeah, those seem to be the biggest theories of either Lego didn't know what her face was going to look like, or they didn't want to give it away. Like maybe she's got some identifying marks, like scars or whatever, or something that we can tell. But that being said, we should go back head. Hopefully, in future sets like Art of Force Awakens, we'll get a nor like the actual head she's got. Uh, maybe she has got some scars, maybe she's got some tattoos, something like that would be very, very cool. But yeah, I really think even though she's not exactly gonna be the cheapest minifigure in the world, she's you know pretty rare and pretty well, pretty cool figure, pretty um <laughs> what's the word? Key to the trilogy is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I do think we'll get her in more sets to come, so if you do not get this set, for whatever reason, because I think this is definitely one of the best Force Awakens sets, I guess it's alright, because you can, probably, well, you'll probably be able to get her in future sets, but I don't think you'll get any any sets which will be cheap, so realistically, this may be one of the cheapest sets you'll get her in, because she is a pretty cool minifigure. That being said, she's very, very nice, uh, and yeah, that's more necessary to her. I think it's now to move on to some very more cool minifigures, in fact, exclusive to the set, the Flame Droopers. Alright, so next up we have here the Flame Troopers, First Order Flame Troopers, that is. Uh, there isn't really much to say with these guys. Of course, everything about them is completely unique, completely new, and I really love these guys. In fact, when I first saw the this set and the set pictures, I was like, wow, what are those guys? What are they doing? I presume they're Flame Troopers, because you can see on the box art that they've got flames. You can see their, their flames coming out of them. But I don't think, I mean, might have done, I'm not sure if I was paying attention, but I don't think by that point, by the time we saw the pictures for these sets, that we'd actually seen uh, the Flame Troopers in action in any of the trailers. But of course, we have now, and they do look extremely cool. Can I just say, I mean, the fact they brought them in a set kind of implies they are going to be fairly major things in the film. And of course, we have seen them in a couple of the trailers, so there's uh, that pretty cool about that. But everything about them, it's not literally just like First Order Troopers with like a backpack or something, whereas we've got with the clones, if you remember we've got some flame clones a while back, which are basically clone troopers with, you know, different guns and stuff. These are completely different, their head uh, helmet moulds are completely unique, the printing everything is so awesome, seriously, these guys, I cannot stress enough, I think they are so unbelievably cool, and these are definitely going to go on for a very large amount on eBay or other sites. You know, these are definitely going to be very expensive minifigures, so I highly recommend picking these up where you can. I'm so glad we've got two of them uh, in this set. I was thinking that Lego made cheap out just give us one, you know, just because they want to ramp up the price. But, you know, these guys are extremely cool. I do have to ask, though, similar to the Death Star Troopers, how do they see how that slipped exactly? Some please tell me. That seems unbelievably small to see out of anything. I mean, that, that just seems extremely weird, quite frankly. But that being said, the helmet itself is a very, very nice mold. I really am loving it. It's kind of like a stealth trooper kind of mold. Kind of a stealth trooper mixed with like a scuba trooper kind of thing. That's just what it looks like to me. So I think that looks extremely cool. Very, very cool indeed. Lifting it up, we do get face paint. Unfortunately, the clone trooper, we get that with all the first order troopers here. Uh, I presume they are like rank, they're not just like clones because we've kind of seen that before. So I presume they are people who have volunteered or maybe, I don't know, maybe slaves that have been shown into the first order. Of course, at this point, we don't really know, or well, we may know, but I just haven't researched it because I want it all to be a surprise for me, but anyway. So we've got clone trooper heads. Uh, strictly speaking, according to Lego, these aren't clone trooper heads, they are just trooper heads, so it makes more sense. But everyone says they're clone trooper heads, and it kind of just annoys people when we get them all in like stormtroopers and other different sets. But I don't think it's the biggest deal ever. I mean, unless you're going to like a stop motion or a mock where you're actually going to see the heads, you can just give them a different one if you really want to. But eh, it's alright, I guess. I don't particularly mind. It's a head, it's a head, really. Uh, that being said, of course, we do see the skin under there, which I wish we didn't. I wish it was kind of black, but whatever. Everything about the torso there, especially the legs. I really love the legs here. I think there is quite a lot of detailing on the legs. Quite a lot indeed. I really am loving that. I can't stress how much I love this torso and the legs printing. It is actually completely different to the regular First Order. Because uh, we've got different stuff. These seems more like, not just flame troopers, but just heavy artillery troopers. You know, with their guns and with all these pouches and weapons and all this stuff. They look very, very cool indeed. Everything about them is completely white, by the way. I mean, so is the Force First Order, but we kind of expect the First Order to have black hands. Whereas these guys almost remind me more of um, Snow Troopers. Of course, we have got Snow Troopers in different sets, but, you know. I expect them to have black hands as well, but they have white hands. The backpacks, of course, are very cool. They're standard brick builds. Uh, nothing much to say. You could build one on your own. Although, this piece in the back, you can see here, 
can't remember, I'm not going to take it off because it just takes a while. But these pistons in the back is uh, not unique, but it is slightly rare, or at least it is for me in my collection, uh, which can be pretty helpful if you want to give more of your minifigures backpacks and stuff like that. They can be pretty helpful to that, so that's a pretty nice piece to have. There is back printing there. Again, taking it off would just be such a hassle, but there is back printing, and you can just see uh, under there. It's very, very nice as well. Uh, the rifle, which strictly speaking is meant to be connected to the backpack, but you, what can you do? Uh, has a little thing here to give the impression that it's an actual flame uh, thing. Uh, you can go on Brick Arms or I don't know, maybe some other sites to get your own flame flamethrower. <laughs> That's the word I was going for. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is very, very nice. The entire figure is incredibly cool, and again, we get two of them in this set. Very, very nice. I'm actually kind of glad. Some people wished we got four of the first old troopers as opposed to two of them and two of these. I'm actually very glad we got two of them and two of them because I, you know, obviously we're going to get more first old troopers in later sets, but I really like the fact we're getting more flame troopers because I'm not sure they're going to be as rare. I mean, sure, they will be as rare and just things like that. But yeah, that is more it's the minifigure. Extremely cool. Arguably the best or second best minifigure in the set. Maybe apart from Captain Phasma, I'm not sure. Leave down your comments down below. Uh, but yeah, that being said, let's just now go on to the next minifigure, the First Order Trooper. Alright, so next up we have the First Order Stormtrooper. This arguably, some have said it's kind of the best minifigure of the set because it's so standard. In some ways, like, because the clones, everyone wanted to get the clones and everyone loved it when we got so many. But the thing is, uh, especially with the older Clone Wars sets, you may notice that in a lot of the sets, we didn't get that many of them. We only got one or two. For example, the ATTE from Turn 8, we only got one Clone Trooper and Captain Rex, of course, but... Yeah, so hopefully we'll get more, it'll be different with this new trilogy, we'll actually get a decent amount of these in each set, of course, apart from battle packs, we, we should get four anyway, but that's the point, anyway, so this minifigure, really, again, as I said, it's exactly the same printing as Captain Phasma, except, of course, it is a standard Stormtrooper, so it's completely white, including the hands, the hands are white as well, I really kind of prefer they be black, I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but they kind of remind me more of Snowtroopers now, because Snowtroopers are meant to have white hands, uh, I understand, if you actually see the pictures, the hands are kind of black with white on top of them, if you understand what I mean. But I feel there is more black, and I feel the gloves themselves are really more black than white, so, yeah. But hopefully they could improve that in future ones, and again, you could just buy extra hands and, you know, put them on. But even so, looking at the minifigure, then, the minifigure is extremely cool. Really, quite a lot of detail for a standard trooper. I really have to keep this detail in most troopers to come, because you're going to build an army of these. One of the things that Storm uh, sorry, clones lacked from was a massive amount of detail. That's probably because LEGO made so many clone troopers, they were like, oh, they shot a lot cheaper if they just made them standard detail. But there's quite a lot of detail here, quite a lot to look at, you know, it's very, very nice. We get a standard weapon here, standard black, you know, very nice. Again, we get two of these. I mean, yeah, strictly speaking, this vehicle is meant to be able to carry, like, you know, at least a dozen guys. But, uh, again, you know, I presume they will give us more of these guys in battle packs and future things to come. So, uh, really not much to say. As I said before, he's got a standard Stormtrooper head, or, you know, sorry, clone head, or whatever, um, seen before. So, yeah, but really not a massive amount to say. You can see the printing here goes pretty nicely, in my opinion. The hel uh, sorry, not helmet. The belt is white with sort of black printed onto it, which is pretty cool. The torso printing kind of reminds me more Stormtrooper, but I think it's more, much more Stormtrooper than a clone, obviously, because it's close to that era. But uh, that being said, it is very, very nice. Uh, I'm just going to do a few little comments on the actual helmet itself, like the design of it. I think the design is very, very cool. For a while, I wasn't sure about the design when I first saw it in the first trailer. I was thinking, eh, Stormtroopers are so classic, it's hard to see anything kind of different. But I'm actually liking it. I'm liking the sleek design because I feel I do want the trilogy to feel a lot more modern because obviously it is more mo modern. But I feel the old trilogies, you know, felt like they were a lot more used in terms of like X Wings with Dusty and things like that. And that was good, that was good. It made me feel more real. But this trilogy, I kind of want it to feel more modern, more new because more, you know, it seems to be, if you will, in the Apple era is what I call it, what, what we are right now, you know, with technology and all this stuff which is a lot cleaner, it's a lot, you know, more efficient. I kind of want the, the new trilogy to sort of represent that. Um, so, yeah. That being said, this guy is extremely cool. Hope we get him more. I mean, we have seen him in a few of the upcoming battle packs will be coming, but unfortunately we are not getting a battle pack with four of these guys as of yet. Hopefully we will soon. Hopefully we'll get a ton of these guys, but you know what Lego's like. They really try to ramp the prices up on these guys. Uh, yeah, how many times have I said guys in the last sentence? <laughs> that being said, they are extremely cool, and yeah, really. I'm not sure they're coming on the other side. I think one of these guys comes in the color and shuttle, and he's got like a cape thing on the side. But other than that, I don't think they actually do come in any other sets. That's unfortunate, but yeah. That being said, they are extremely cool. I've said that 
sucks seven times now, but there you go, they are really cool. <laughs> Alright, so I think that's more or less it to the first order Stormtrooper. Pick them up, hopefully you can pick up a lot more when they come out more regularly after Force Awakens and hopefully in future years and films to come. But that being said, let's just now go into the last two minifigures, which are the Resistance Soldiers, male and female. Alright, so last up we have the Resistance Soldier. This is the female Resistance Soldier. The male one is slightly different, other than just the fact he's male. He does have different printing and stuff, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, so a lot of people have been criticizing, saying I'm not sure they like the design of the Resistance Soldiers and stuff like that, because they really don't look that powerful at all. And I strongly agree with that. Of course, you know, similar to the Rebels and the Stormtroopers, you don't want the Rebels to look better than the Stormtroopers. You know, the Stormtroopers were much a larger force, and they weren't meant to look like that. They were meant to look like uh, mindless sort of drones, if you will, going against the Rebels, which are a much smaller band of, you know, little group. So I kind of understand where LEGO and, you know, Star Wars was going with this, but I do agree that these guys do look pretty pathetic. Like, not just pathetic to the point where it's like the underdog story coming up. They just look pathetic, quite frankly. They literally look like citizens who got a gun. You know, it's like a guy on his farm who just got his rifle and start trying to kill the Empire or something. So, yeah, they do look pretty pathetic, but hopefully they will look better as it goes on. Maybe this is like beginning stages. Maybe as the films go on, they'll look more powerful and they'll get more powerful. So, who knows? That being said, they do have a different color rifle. Again, not the same as Captain Phasma's or the standard. This is Oh yeah, this is a lot more close to gunmetal, I really would say. Where it's kind of somewhere in between, if you will, the same kind of colour as Captain Phasma, but darker, really. It's hard to explain. Just, I'm not sure if you can see it that well in the camera, the differences. Because the differences between these colours of weapons are pretty subtle, but, um, you know, that's, yeah, it's just a slightly different colour. So I guess it's kind of cool to give it more distinction between the Resistance and the First Order, but, you know, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, so we don't have any leg printing on this one or the male one because I guess they really want to ram home that these guys are not that advanced. They're not that, you know, special. They don't have grenades or anything like that that like, the first order do. Um, they have a bit of torso printing, but, you know, it's, again, not very detailed at all. You know, it's just kind of standard stuff. We've got a few pouches in the back. This literally looks like the sort of stuff you could pick up from Walmart, if you don't understand what I mean. Like, you know, just sort of like standard hiking gear, not like military gear. This looks like standard stuff, really. But, um, yeah, we've got this kind of, if you will, cream, sandy colour. I'm not sure what you'd call this, but, yeah. Uh, no gloves or anything like that. First of all, have they just have regular hands, no helmets, no whatever. Just standard faces and standard hair. We can see here, this is her, if you will, I don't know, smirk face. Kind of suspicious face, or something. And this is kind of happy face, you know, standard face. So that's all pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's really not much amount to say about these guys. I think it's kind of the point that you don't want to um, reveal too much about it. Because, you know... These guys are extremely basic, you know, there's no point in getting around it, they are, but I feel that's very much the point, there isn't much to talk about these guys, because they aren't meant to be visible, they aren't meant to be like this massive miniature force going against the First Order, they're kind of meant to be, similar to the Rebels, kind of just hit and run tactics, you know, where they just try to bomb a place and then get out of there and blend into the citizens, you know, I think that's really what they're trying to get at, not as much, you know, this big force where they have you know, nuclear weapons or something, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, um, so, yeah, they are pretty cool, but I feel that's more or less the point of them, that they're just meant to be standard, they're really not meant to be that much, and they're just meant to be regular citizens who try and go against the big bag First Empire, or First Order, or whatever it's called, <laughs> yeah, so that being said, that's pretty much it, the female version, we now go on to the male version, and here we have the male version, quite frankly. I mean, I'm pretty glad they gave a female and a male version, just kind of give it a more sort of individuality, because I feel, I mean, even though, strictly speaking, they're not clones, a lot of people thought the Storm Troopers were clones, and a lot of people think that these guys are clones, not literally think they're clones, but in the way they're just minus drones and faceless sort of soldiers which don't really have a conscience or anything. Um, whereas these guys, to give them more male and female, and to give them more personality and differences, really shows that they're just, you know, different people, uh, to give them more, you know, a face, if you will. But anyway, yeah, so I kind of, I guess, like the design of him. I'm not 100% on his hair piece, just because I'm not 100% on that hair, really, just in general. <laughs> but uh, even so, apart from that, I do like the design of the torso more. I think it looks a little more battle-hardened or something, kind of just a darker kind of colour. I'm not sure what you call it, not brown, kind of dirty sand kind of colour. I don't know. But yeah, he's got the pouches uh, on the front, you can see there. And the, these aren't black, by the way. They may look black in the camera, but these are brown uh, legs. So that's pretty cool. The same colour, the gun, as the female had, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we see more buckles and stuff in the back. This does, I would say, have slightly more detail than the female one does, but not a massive amount more. You know, it's not, like, breaking the envelope or what... No, not that. What was it called? I, don't know what, I don't know what the saying is, but it's not, you know, stressing the envelope or whatever. <laughs> it's not really putting it out there how much detail it has, but I suppose it would have more than the female one does. It's pretty cool. Uh, we get the standard face, you know, sort of... I don't know, what do you call it? Standard face, really. 
Uh, and no back face, which is kind of weird. The, you know, the female has two faces and he does not, but whatever. Uh, stand of, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been doing this review for some time now, I'm losing my words, okay. Uh, standard, um, colour for the hands. Uh, you know, just flesh colour and all that stuff. But yeah, he looks pretty cool. Pretty good guy. And I hope we do get more of him. I presume we will. I mean, in all honesty, I would say the Stormtroopers from the original trilogy sets were more common than the, res the Rebel ones. Or that, is that just me? I, I seem to have more Stormtroopers than I do have Rebels. So who knows if that will be more trend in these Lego sets based on this, but I don't know. I kind of hope they provide us with a roughly an equal amount of Rebels to First Order Troopers, you know, just so it helps. Or maybe we should get more First Order Troops, because that's what, what it's actually going to be like. There's going to be more of them than there will be of these guys, so who knows. But yeah, that is more of it, the, the minifigures then. The minifigures in the set, again, are extremely cool. And while the Resistance Troopers aren't that special, they are unique to this set, and you want to get quite a lot of them. And I feel that the lack of printing isn't as much down to LEGO. It's just more down to how they're designed in Star Wars, so really, you can't really bash LEGO for that. But yeah, so they're extremely cool, uh, and that is more into the minifigures. I'm sure it's already gone on way too long. Sorry about that, but there was a lot to go over, and I really do like these guys. But let's just narrow right in to the set itself. All right, so next though, we are moving on to the set itself. This set, um, when I first built it, by the way, the live stream to me building this will be down in the description. Unfortunately, there's no let's build because I forgot to record. Oh, uh, whatever. But even so, the live stream down below. When I was building this set, immediately the first reaction I had when I finished it was, this is actually fairly small. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, the tiny. And I would say, uh, I would say it's a stretch to say it's worth 80 pounds. I know uh, pieces wise, it is worth 80 pounds, it really is. But to the size of it, eh, it's a stretch to say the least. I don't know. It's just, it doesn't feel insanely large, quite frankly. But, you know, that being said, there is quite a lot of detailing around here. You can see it is a very, very cool set. In all honesty, there isn't a massive amount of places you can pick it up from. I guess you can probably try to pick it up from here, but I wouldn't recommend it because it is attached, obviously, but not incredibly, you know, like it's not pinned in or anything. It's literally just attached by actual bricks. And of course, here is an actual feature where it actually comes off, so don't grab it from the top. If you want to pick it up, pick it up from the bottom or like the sides or something like that. So, yeah. Alright, so we're just going to start going from the back to the front. You can see here, we've got the engines, which look very, very nice. From this angle, I'm not sure, I don't like the design of it, because it just doesn't look symmetrical. And of course, it's not symmetrical. But the way it's kind of just at the side, I don't like the design of it. It does very much look like D-Day um, landing crafts we saw, by the way. Well, not we saw, but, you know, uh, if you've seen Saving, Saving Pirate Ryan or other war films, when they were landing on like, the French beaches, you know, um, it, it very much looked like those, except they didn't have tops. But that's just a little history for you, I'm sure none of you like history class, I sure as hell didn't. But even so, you see the engines here, there's a bit of debate about whether these are crafts that hover along the surface or whether they can actually fly in space. It has been confirmed that these can fly in space, which kind of begs the question of why they then have these wheels, generally speaking flying vehicles like say the gunships. Uh, wouldn't have those sort of wheels, but I don't know, I guess Lego just kind of add them in. If you want to make it hover, you can. But again, of course, like many of these wheels, they don't poke out very far, and thus it really doesn't give the impression much at all. But even so, the engines, by the way, I think look extremely cool. I mean, yeah, you've got some Technic here, which doesn't look too pretty. Uh, and if you really wanted, you could plate it over. You could just, like, easily put some plates, you know, some tiles over it and just make it look a little better. Personally, in my opinion, it's not the biggest deal in the known universe. I mean, I kind of wish, I guess, that it was a little more smooth, because it feels like it's much more box, just going, or something like that. Um, but, you know, that's probably just designed the actual thing. I'm not blaming Lego for that per se, and it's really not the biggest thing in my personal opinion. But I really do love the design of the engines. I think they look really cool. Um, but yeah, moving on, we've got these flaps on the side. Oops. <laughs> and it came off, okay. We've got the flaps on the side which do move slightly. I'm not sure what the point of these are. These probably just more decoration and stuff. But they are, I, I, I presume, like, you can probably search this when it says on Wikipedia or something. These are meant to be, like, for, I don't know, stabilization or something. But you just got these little flaps on each side which really don't do much. They're more just for decoration and detail and make it look a little cooler, you know? So that's pretty cool. Um, got some more detailing here. Now, I think, well, I don't think, I maybe these are like kind of engines to help it lift off if it wants to. Because uh, they do kind of look like engines and it, this entire compartment looks like sort of an engine to help it lift off. Um, but, you know, that's just my opinion. So that's, that's a possibility, I think, that these could be engines. Who knows? But I'm wrong. I'm literally just guessing. So who knows? <laughs> Alright, uh, and of course, by the way, everything I say is of course the exact same on the other side. The only thing that is not is this cockpit, but I'll show you in a second. We got some more detailing here, which looks very, very nice. I'm loving this detail. This is a knob, which I will show you what it does in a minute. But you can actually see it does. Oh, you can't see. Sorry. Okay, you can't see. 
very slightly see inside there you're meant to be looking. If I turn this knob, there's this thing poking up, but I'll show you more of that in a second. Uh, but yeah, so everything here is very nice. The underneath, yes, okay, it does not look pretty. It's very technic based. This rod does pull open the ramp. I'll show you that in a second as well. But yeah, okay, there's a little part of this which does not look pretty. It's really meant to just look pretty if you, you know, look at it from, say, the side or something. But, you know, it doesn't look entirely pretty there. And of course, you know, it's, it, it's not really meant to. It's just kind of, you know, the underside of plates. But I don't know, maybe there's something they could do about it. I don't really know. If you really wanted to, I think you could mod this to make it look a lot better, you know, tile it up. Put some more of those plates or whatever on it, you know, just make it look a little fancier, but it's not the biggest thing in my personal opinion. Uh, so yeah, we've got um, some larger pieces here to kind of cover that up, so that looks very, very nice. I think these are meant to be lights, by the way. Uh, they don't actually light up, but yeah, so I think they're pretty cool. These are meant to be actual lights, by the way. Oh, not on the set, but like, um, these are meant to, you know, glow and show where it's going in the dark, which is kind of weird, seeing as it's a spaceship. <laughs> so it's always in the dark, kind of. But um, yeah, this is again another light. This very, very much does remind me of the D-Day landing craft, you know, with the lights there. It very much looks like it, apart from they didn't have tops on those crafts, obviously. But you know, so moving up, we of course got the spring loader missiles. How could you not have them? You do have a spare green one here, you know, but again, nothing may show. Well, wasn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, so we got those. We got two of them, and we got this thing, which does spin around. It does not go 360 because the cockpit is in the way, unfortunately. But you're not going to want it to go back here because the guy who fires it is going to be sitting here again for the last time. Sorry, it's so dusty. But yeah, so you can see down there. There, is, that is a sticker, by the way. I'm not. I can't quite remember how many stickers are on this, unfortunately. But there, I think there is a fair amount. That's a sticker, and the guy literally sits in there. This reminds me very, very much of the uh, what is it? What is it? Republic fighter tank, I think. Yeah, from turn eight or nine, I don't remember. But that set that was kind of not really seen. It very much reminds me of that, or maybe uh, reminds me of the pirate tank. That's another good example where it kind of just pops up. Uh, anyway, so you sit a guy down there, I, I can't bother to do it right now, but you sit a guy down there and you simply turn it up and he pops out and he's sitting there and he's firing this. And so it looks like what it does in the box, that's simple enough. Uh, and in theory you could have someone permanently in there if you want to, so like, you know, because it can close if a guy is sitting there when, in this position. So you just pop it up and, you know, opens the hatch, all good. Now, it is, it is responsible for gravity, so it will open this hatch if you turn it upside down, but I don't think it's really meant to turn it upside down, so who knows. Uh, moving on, I guess we'll just go on to the cockpit right now. On the cockpit, weirdly enough, there's no, like, window piece on the thing. I, I, that seems very odd. I guess that's probably just because Lego couldn't. Like, there was no piece that quite fitted it, because it was meant to be black. It's kind of, I think, I guess it was meant to be like, tinted out or something. But I don't know. It just looks incredibly strange. Right? There's a sticker there, and it's meant to be a cockpit where, you know, you see through. I mean, Lego makes a ton of different window pieces, I mean, I don't know, could you not maybe, you know, think of one to fit it? But, gosh, I don't know, it just seems so weird to me, but anyway. Alright, so you open it from the back, of course, simple as, and then you pull this out, that is a sticker as well. The guy sits in there, or maybe stands in there, you know, whichever. Uh, it's not actually stuck in there, it just literally slides in and out, something like that. And of course you see the, the brick wall there, you can't see out the other side, that just seems incredibly odd to me. I mean, I, d I don't know, <laughs> really, it just seems incredibly odd, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Alright, so I think moving on to the second last feature, uh, of course we have the ramp here, which does open and close, you simply pull this knob here, you can see, you know, the rod underneath, it's a pretty simple system to see how it works, pull the rod, ah, and you pull that down. Oops, <laughs> that's another feature I will show you in a second, my bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's kind of also another problem, by the way. It is, it's only stuck in there by two studs, so it does kind of fall out if you keep upside down too long. Even so, one thing I'll point out, by the way, there's nothing stopping this thing. I really thought there was going to be, but there's not. In terms of, if you pull this out, it goes out the full way. And that's also another thing, the way these, it's meant to look like a course like that. So it kind of looks really cool, like it's actually being lowered. But these do not do anything. They're not like actual things that lower and close it. Which I kind of wish they were. I really wish they actually did something. As opposed to just looking there for decoration. And especially if like, I don't know, you're holding over a cliff. And it just falls out of that. It's just, it looks so ridiculous, kind of. I mean, what the hell? 
I don't know. I really thought there'd be some sort of stopper to stop it from going the entire way. But of course, if it's on flat ground, then it would just go. Um, I can't do this. Okay, it'll just go. Oops, sorry, you can't see it. It'll just go like that length. So it looks normal if you just put it on ground. But normally, it just looks. But otherwise, it just looks really weird, quite frankly. So I'm not entirely sure about that feature. I don't like that. I wish these actually did something, and I wish it didn't go down the entire way because it's just so sort of floppy. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But anyway, we've got more lights in here, which look very, very cool, can I say, by the way. It might be somewhat of other sets we've got in the past, which I can't think of, but, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take this off then and show you more of the interior. Again, this is only kept in by those two studs, and that is absolutely it. everything else is tiled. Which I guess makes it extremely easy to take off, which is good. But it also means that, um, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> it also means that if you turn it upside down too long, it, you know, it kind of does drop out and stuff, and that's the problem, but what are you going to do, I guess? Anyway, so you can see that the inside is not very detailed, but it's not really meant to be, it's just meant to hold truth, which is very, very nice. You can modify this, I think, to create more. That looks like a door, doesn't it? It looks like a door, it's got a sticker and everything. It's not a door. There's nothing inside here. The only thing inside here is what I showed you before, and that's that. That is all that's inside the other side, and it doesn't open, it's nothing. I suppose you could, I'm not sure if you could actually, it depends on the design. But if you have this, you could probably try to like think of a way of taking out these bricks. I mean, they do kind of go through the entire thing, so it would be quite a task. But even so, you could think of a way and try to make it open. But even so, there's quite a lot of space in here. You'd have to modify the inside quite a bit to make it look habitable. But it's just, it's just weird, the fact it looks like a door and it's not. I presume it's actually meant to be a door in Star Wars, but they just couldn't do it, or maybe it was... I don't know, too many pieces, maybe wanted to keep the cost down, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, so you can see those pegs down the walls, by the way. I accidentally put them the wrong way around, just saying. Um, but anyway, so you can see the pegs on the wall, they are meant to be for weapons, I presume. There's only four of them, and they meant to be able to carry like a dozen different weapons, but okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think the interior looks very nice, it's very simple, there's really not much to say about it. It's meant to look simple. Very cool, you got the, these aren't lights, but I do like the fact they are reds, you know. Maybe that's just keep, to keep costs down, but I like the way it kind of stands out, gives a different look to it, rather than just like standard grey, or, you know, lightish blue grey, or something like that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's more to the features of the set, overall I think the set is extremely cool. Giving a size sort of comparison, I mean, I don't actually have a set with me, unfortunately, I probably should have got one. But you can see here, this is like, you know, I don't know how many bricks that is, but that's something. <laughs> Comparing it to the box you see in stores, it only goes maybe like halfway up the box, or maybe a little more than halfway, but you know, it's not the biggest thing in the world. I was being a little bigger. I understand the pieces and price and all that does fit the cost, but I don't know something about it. I mean, a lot of people are saying recently, of course, you know, oh, Lego's getting more expensive and stuff like that. That's debatable. I think sets are more just having more pieces in them for the size of them, rather than smaller sets getting more expensive, they're just having more in them, which I guess is good, but I don't know. I don't really know. It seems like there's a lot of open space, especially in the back and things like that. So it just kind of seems weird to have such a small set. I mean, it's not tiny. Don't get me wrong. I want to stress it's not tiny, but it's not, you know, insanely large. It's probably like, it's a smi slightly smaller than the gunship. Even taking away the wings and stuff, the, it's slightly smaller than the gunship. So no, I'm not sure about it. But even so, that's more or less it, the set. I think, nonetheless, it is still a really cool set. And of course, you've seen my top 10 of the sets of the year. So you'll know that I really, really enjoy this set. You know, it's like in my top... I don't know, two or three or something, you know, this is a really, really cool set, despite the flaws it may have, despite the way that you probably could improve it, uh, I don't think I'll improve it, just because I think it's fine the way it is, but you definitely could, it's not the hardest thing to mod, so, yeah, that's more or less it for the set then, I'm so sorry this is going on so long, but I'm going to try and race through the instruction manual, the box, and then conclude this review. Alright, so the instruction manual, we've actually got a slightly different size. Most instruction manuals of like a set this size will be quite larger, but this one's more square, simple. It's fairly thick, I suppose, but it's quite a large one. It doesn't have two instruction manuals. I, they might be phasing that out, I'm not sure. But it seems like not many sets have two instruction manuals these days. Look in the back, of course, we've got the same art we have in other instruction manuals from this wave. Uh, we've got the TIE Fighter and the um, X-Wing, Pose X-Wing. So, yeah, pretty cool. We've got the entire set from this line. I didn't review those two, which is unfortunate, although I do really want to get that one at some point. I'm going to wait for Gear Dad down to price. I was thinking of asking for Christmas, but I'm not sure. I'll think about that. We'll see what happens for Christmas, but um, I am going to get that some, at some point. I'm hoping to get another one of those. Maybe another one of those. They are pretty expensive. I will not get it at £40 again. I will get it when it comes out cheaper, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, you can see every single minifigure here. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people have said that some of the, I say the best minifigure are either Kylo Ren or, where is she? Oh, there we are. Captain Phasma. 
I'd say that they are the two best minifigures. Don't know which one. I'm a little on the fence about that. Of course, the, uh, the helmet and the lightsaber really do put Kylo Ren, you know, pretty far. But, no, I'm not sure. We'll see. Blue down in the comments. Which one do you like more? Captain Phasma or Kylo Ren in terms of minifigures? But you can see here we've got the minifigures and all that stuff. I showed you everything. I didn't put the minifigures in the set, but I think you can more get the gist of what they look like. Uh, of course, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, by the way, that the set, while it does look like it can carry more, because of the large, you know, flame troopers and their backpacks and all that stuff, they do take quite a lot of space, and maybe you can't fit quite a dozen, but hopefully you could try to mod it, I don't know if that's even possible, but, eh, we'll see. Anyway, so, yeah, pretty nice, show you all that, quite a lot of pieces, again, nearly 800, so, that's all very well and good, you do get a ton of those spare things for that, as you normally do, there you go, that's more of the instruction manual, not a massive amount to say, uh, yeah, pretty standard, quite frankly. It took me about two hours or more to build it. I can't remember. Watch the live stream, you'll see me build it. So, yeah, that being said, let's just now go into the box. All right, so moving on to the box. The box, I think, is one of the biggest. I think it's about the same size as the Poe Dameron, like the X-Wing box, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. I'm sorry if I am. Okay, so we have the minifigures, of course, down there. Quite a few minifigures. Normally, they would have, like, times two of a minifigure, but I guess to try and make it look like there's more, they just put each, every single minifigure, but whatever. Of course, we've got Disney in the back there. Nothing much to say. Like, because it's European, there is no piece count. Lord knows why. I've uh, got the size comparison. Not much amount. Just turning around, simply. You can see, by the way, all the shots of this are taken from the side, because they're not 100% on this back here, or the, the front doesn't look incredibly beautiful, but even so. Uh, you can see here the art up there of like you know the different things. I really like it. I think that looks cool. By the way, uh, I hope they continue out for future sets. I uh, see here the different uh, weapons. I think it's clearer to see here the different colours. Really, that's Captain Phasma's, and that's the two resistance, and that's the two um, resi no, no first order troopers things. See, it's all the equipment and all that stuff, which is very very cool. Uh, just more of the features, quite frankly. Not a matter I'd say. Again, sorry, it's a little tattered and stuff like that. It's because I've had this box sometime, and yeah, sorry. But yeah, it's a pretty standard box. Again, I think it's the same size like Poe Dameron's. Maybe a little larger, maybe a little wider this way, but we'll see about that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's more to the entire thing, then. Let's just now go and conclude this review. Again, so sorry it was so long. So thank you guys for watching my review. I hope you did enjoy it. I'm so sorry this is so long. I mean, my camera's saying this is nearly 50 minutes long, so I presume I'll cut it or something, but we'll have to see. Anyway, so this set, as I said, is extremely cool. I've said this many times. I know, but man, guys, pick it up. If you can't afford it, because it's pretty expensive, uh, pieces, I guess, is worth it. But for the size, I don't know. I feel like the reason a lot of people are saying about not just these sets, but also other sets in the past, they're getting more expensive. It's not because of necessarily a piece count, but because of the size of these things. This does have quite a lot of larger pieces, especially on the side and on the top. So that is probably a reason it's a little more expensive. But I'm sure you probably would find it cheaper. Maybe we've got a Black Friday or maybe if for Christmas, you know, sort of deals. Just look around, look on Amazon, look at, I don't know, eBay or, I don't know, maybe not eBay. But, you know, other places, I'm sure probably be a bit cheaper. Hopefully we'll find it for a bit of a discount. $90 does seem like a pretty hefty price. But, you know, I, um, I'm a little on fence about whether it's worth it or not. Maybe you can wait for it to go on sale. It's not one of those sets you actually have to get it. But I would recommend getting at least some before The Force Awakens, you know, to get in that feel, Force Awakens feel. Because there's only like a week left. Maybe, well, maybe a little more a week. But even so, it's so close now, it's insane. So I highly recommend picking this up if you can. That being said, that is it to my review of this set. I hope you did enjoy it. I'm so sorry it was so long. I'm, I'm going to stop saying that now because it's too late to change it but yeah that is it i hope you guys did enjoy this is my last review for the entire year i really wanted to get this one out before i uh start next year because i don't want this to do this next year because make it a classic review because that's ridiculous i'm so sorry about this two month break but what can you do i'm here finally after three months i'm gonna stop talking now because you probably got sick of my voice Okay, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time, next year, with the 2016 LEGO Stars reviews. I'll talk more about how many I'm going to get, and what I'm going to get, and we'll see. But there you go. Thank you guys for watching. This extremely cool set, one of the best of the year, and I will see you next time. Bye, troops.